Hey everybody, I am in full Thanksgiving preparation mode and I'm preparing in advance two separate casseroles. One is going to be made out of a delicious butternut squash, which I have already cubed, so it's ready, peeled and cubed and seeded, so it's ready to go. The butternut squash casserole is going to be a savory, um, a savory casserole and it's got kale, bacon, uh, an array of onions and things like that. The sweet potato casserole is going to be sweet, but not marshmallowy. So we're gonna do the butternut squash first. It bakes longer, so I thought that I would get that going first. I'm going to heat up some, um, this recipe has some bacon in it and I reserved all of the bacon grease from the pan that I baked it in and I put some of that in addition to some butter in the pan. While that's warming up, I'm gonna add all of my onions and garlic. I actually chopped up uh, one leek. I had some shallots from something else I did um, a week or two ago. So I decided to throw some of that in there and substitute out some of the onion. Of, and then so I did about a half an onion and then some garlic. I don't have any fresh herbs, so I'm going to add dried herbs. So I'm gonna go a little bit lighter on the amount. I just added some dried thyme. And then here is some dehydrated sage that I dried in our dehydrator from our backyard garden that we grew this summer. And I've actually already used this sage in another recipe for Thanksgiving. I made a compound butter, which is just a butter mixed with various seasonings and different ingredients. I did a garlic herb one that is just so tasty. So I'm gonna put a decent amount of sage in there. Maybe even a little bit more. I did go a little bit bigger on my squash, added a lot more kale than it calls for. So I'm gonna kind of just add more of everything. Now, while this is getting going, I just pulled my sweet potatoes out of the oven. I decided to bake my sweet potatoes because they get a much deeper caramelized flavor when you do it that way. Okay, I'm going to add all these ingredients to a larger bowl. I'm hoping it's large enough to do a good mix of everything. So I just wanted to kind of saute up the greens a little bit, just to soften them a little. So I have two different baking sheets that I'm gonna use. I'm trying to avoid using the aluminum throwaway pans, even though we're gonna be traveling with these. Um, so it's gonna take, um, you know, washing and bringing them home and things like that, but I wanted to use reusable containers. So I have a large one here. This is more like a 10 by 15, it's quite large. Both of these casseroles are feeding a lot of people, um, but the other one is more of a true nine by 13. And I figured this one, because it's doing sort of like a little roasting, Thing with all of this that I think it might be better a little bit more spread out. So I decided to use my larger pan um, for the squash and then we'll use this, the, the 9 by 13 for the sweet potato. Now both of these casseroles have a topping. This one is going to be topped with some breadcrumbs, Italian seasoning, and even a little cheese. So I'm going to go ahead and get this in the oven right now. It's going to bake for 30 minutes and then I'm going to let it cool down a little bit put on the topping, and I'm gonna wait to do the second bake until the day of Thanksgiving. The butternut squash casserole is done. The pieces are fork tender, so I'm gonna get this cooling down in our back porch, and later we will add the toppings. Mm -hmm. 
So now we are getting to work on the sweet potato casserole. For this, I'm going to just mix the potatoes up first by themselves to make them pretty smooth, then add eggs, milk, a little sugar, vanilla, and some salt. The topping for this will go on right away, and it is made out of brown sugar, flour, butter, and walnuts. The recipe originally called for pecans, but I didn't have any, and so I went with walnuts, and I think it should still turn out pretty great. Now that the squash casserole is very well cooled, I'm going to top it with some sharp white cheddar cheese in addition to some mozzarella cheese. On top of that, I'm adding a breadcrumb topping that is breadcrumbs, some Italian seasoning, in addition to a little bit of olive oil. This will stay frozen until the day before Thanksgiving, which is when we are going to eat it, when I'll move it to the fridge and then warm it in the oven on Thanksgiving day. If you were just gonna make this a day or two in advance of Thanksgiving or any other time you'd want something like this, you can just keep it in the fridge with all the toppings ready to go. The sweet potato casserole is done baking and smells incredible. In fact, all day our house has already smelled so strongly of Thanksgiving and it's been so wonderful. I'm going to keep this frozen now covered with a cover that it actually came with until the day before Thanksgiving and reheat it the same way as I will reheat the other casserole. Thanks for coming along as I prepare two of our Thanksgiving dishes. I hope you have a wonderful day, a wonderful Thanksgiving, and we will see you soon.